you open up Twitch real fast. Uh, I already did send you the link to my uh, Twitch profile question mark. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, if you are new here, I'm Gaiga Giggles. I do art streams on, well, it's usually Mondays, but uh, today uh, I decided to do my stream early for the week because I have doctor appointments to get to. So, yeah. So, uh, and Ellie's there back. There go, now I can see it. Hi. Yeah, because, hi, Ellie's back. Um, she's here. Um, we're just doing I some doodles. Toast with cinnamon sugar. Oh. Huh? I said, I'm eating buttered toast with cinnamon sugar. So, cinnamon toast. Yep, yep. I should have just said cinnamon toast. <laughs> um, the current art project is just figuring out a design for... So, Ellie, have you heard of the Welcome Home ARG? I've heard of it. I've seen a lot of people thirsting for... I forget his name, but I remember he has Darling in his name. Wally Darling. <laughs> Literal, yeah, um, literally me. <laughs> <laughs> literally, I mean, literally me. And it's like he has. Whoever does Wally Darling's voice is a fucking king. They yeah, they have voices. They have voices. Yeah, if you sniff around oh. the website enough, uh, you can find links where, like, we hear Wally's actual voice. With like audio clips um, presented to us mm. as like ripped from the original show. So, uh, for those of you who don't know and are here, um, Welcome Home, the Welcome Home ARG is this beautifully set up ARG by Clown Illustrations. Um, basically, it's presented as a lost media ARG where you have this children's television show that kind of just disappeared off the face of the earth under mysterious circumstances. And there's like, um, so with some old Broadway musicals that kind of fade into nothingness, there's like a restoration project sort of project almost where, um, basically they recover the original, media and bring it back it's kind of like a revival question mark but also not really because they're not trying to bring the show back they're just trying to figure out like what happened to it and what the content of the show was it's really cool and honestly a lot more people should know about it mm. yeah the excuse me um I was aware of its existence, so I never really ended up, like, getting too into it, aside from, like, fandom, fandom stuff. Which, oh, yeah. I'm not smart stuff, enough you know. to participate in an ARG, but I love watching other people participate and sort of gleaning what's going on from them. Yeah. It's For really that, fun. The fandom stuff is usually, like, what I always gravitate towards when it comes to ARG stuff. Yeah, because, like... A lot of people don't really have the time, and in both of our cases, we don't really have the knowledge to participate in yeah. an ARG. <laughs> yeah, plus but for me, the 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 uh, the puppet horror related media that's on my radar is this game called um, Welcome to the Neighborhood. I think it was called, which is literally just like a Resident Evil style game. Like Resi Seven and whatnot, but with puppets, and instead of like, and the bullets you shoot are letters. Like literally, you got a typewriter, like pistol, and a and a typewriter shotgun with the shells being like those like rolls of paper you put into typewriters. It's it's fucking cool. Oh, I love that. That sounds and I, and really I cool. You should like actually stream that sometime. I, I should when I get the money. I I should. You really actually. should. Hang on, I gotta call. I'm gonna call in a favor real fast. 
Hmm? Or maybe... Yeah, you know what, never mind. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. But as far as, like, the ARG goes, I don't know a whole lot about what's going on, but it looks really cool from where I'm standing, and I really like the idea of, like, a puppet version of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is what it looks like the show was yeah. meant to be. With an eyeball on the cover. Oh, sorry. Pardon me? I was, I was, I was gonna say, like, because I thought you were done talking, I was saying that I saw, like, a journal with an eyeball on the cover on Twitter. It was related to, um, uh, what was the show called? It was related to the ARG. I didn't really, like, look into it too much. I just saw it, and I just thought it was a cool design. Sorry, again, I thought you were done talking. No, it's fine. I'm not even mad. Um, Ellie, could you do me a favor and type something in chat? I want to be sure I'm able to read it here. Okay. There you, there go. you go! Yay! I can see it! Yay! So now, whenever I... I can, I can now read the chat. Hell yeah. It's early. Um, earlier in the week. Um, I usually only do these streams on Monday. But... Uh, Something yeah, kind of came up. Personal life stuff. I think hmm? you said doctor's appointment, right? I said, I think you said doctor's appointment, right? Yeah, I had a doctor's appointment uh, t tomorrow. And then I've also got work. But yeah, yeah so cool. very big yeah. fan of the Welcome Home ARG. Very big fan of Wally Darling, especially. Because... Because, like, even though right. a lot of people seem to, like, see him as, like, the villain of the ARG, he has, like, such a gentle voice, and I like it a lot. It's always the villains with the gentle voice that, like, make you really pretty. <laughs> no, that's a horrible joke. Keep it family-friendly, Ellie. This, is, you this on... isn't YouTube. I was gonna say that put you on your knees. <laughs> What? Well, this is a wetness. <laughs> uh, why do you think I stopped myself? Okay, why do you think I stopped myself? Speaking of ARGs, another one I'm a really big fan of is the Walton Files, where it's like a mix of like oh, analog. One. Yeah, it's a mix of like analog horror and an ARG. They've even got a website. It's cool. I'm also a very big that. fan of the fact that Frank Frankly and Eddie Deer are a couple. That is so cute to me. Oh my god, it works. It fucking works. What works? Okay, so, um, for context, I have, um, you know how you allow folks to donate via coffee? Yeah. On streams? Yeah. Well, I also have that on my streams, and I was, uh, and I was testing to see if this Streamlord thing still worked, because if you, um, coffee, coffee allows you to have, like, this little, uh, uh, stream alert overlay on your streams, and you can add your own, like, custom sound effects, and I remember I added one that was, like, the, uh, the sound effect in Danganronpa when you get, like, a mono token or something in the first game, I think. And Bold of you to assume I've actually played... Work? Danganronpa at all. My only interaction yeah. with Danganronpa's as a franchise was the anime. <laughs> oh god, you poor soul. Well, you know what? It's better than Ultra Despair Girls. Good Christ. I played oh, yeah. that on Good. and I still kind of wish I didn't. Oh. It was a slog at best and I wanted to take a shower at worst. Oh, yeah, especially with that one scene. We don't talk about no, that scene. No, we don't talk about that scene. The only good to thing to come from Ultra Despair Girls was Toko Fukawa being 
really gay with Kamaru the whole time. There is no heterosexual. No yeah. There. There's no heterosexual explanation for yeah, Toko and. Like, the ending, they even sleep in the same bed. Literally. Literally so gay. <laughs> They, they were just really fruity the whole time, and I love it. I love. I even love how Kamaru was like, as, when during that scene, she's like, you know, there is a separate bed in that room. You could just sleep in that. <laughs> and Toko was just like, well, maybe I want to sleep oh, in this amazing. one. <laughs> um. Oh, God. So. I don't really have anything horror related in mind for Lupa. She's just kind of here to be here. She's here for funsies. Yeah. Oh. I kind of imagine oh. like the in-universe show Lupa was kind of the resident weirdo character. Where like people thought she was weird when she first showed up because she kept only really being out and about at nighttime. And yeah. being out at nighttime was kind of supposedly considered a bad thing, though nobody really knows why you aren't supposed to be out at the nighttime. There are theories that, um, Wally, uh, there is, like, not theories, plural, there's just one theory. Wally gets possessed by his house at night, and it, like, puppets his body around, and it's just really disturbing to see. Lupa oh, is a wolf. yeah, I remember seeing animatics of, uh, Folks like with Wally trying to like I guess um, beg to the house or something. The fucking windows being the eyes is extremely fucking creepy, and I oh yeah that design yeah. If you're trying to get into this ARG, do be warned. There's a lot of eye imagery uh, surrounding Wally and the house. Um, but yeah, so Lupa is kind of meant to be just the resident weirdo. She's kind of. I kind of consider her to be, like, the local witch, question mark, but, like, this was, the show was supposedly around in the 1970s, so she wasn't really a witch, she was just kind of this kind of spooky, kind of eccentric character, just roaming around, not really doing a whole lot to be particularly menacing, she was just kind of weird, she was a weirdo, and also Barnaby calls her cousin. Uh, I like to imagine she's like Blendon Blandon in the first season of Gravity Falls before his reveal. Because like, if you if y'all know Gravity Falls, you remember that Blendon Blandy you can like occasionally see him in the background of random scenes, and then in his episode it's, it's explained that he's like picking up items that different Mabel had dropped across like time when during that shenanigans, those shenanigans, that episode, you know. So like, I like it's kind of like, like Blendon Blandon, she... but she's more of a Tad Strange kind of character. Y'all remember Tad Strange? Tad Strange. <laughs> Tad Strange. Like, everyone in this town is a Tad Strange, except, ironically, for Tad Strange. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was also voiced by Cecil Baldwin. <laughs> oh my god. Cecil Baldwin? I gotta look this up now. Hang on. I think... I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I will by Cecil from Welcome to Night Vale. It was Cecil Baldwin! <laughs> oh my god! It was Cecil! Cecil! <laughs> That's <amazing>. I don't <laughs> really know what's going on in Welcome oh to Night Vale right now. Um, but I know it's kind of fucked up. Everybody's talking about it on my Tumblr dashboard. I gotta, I gotta continue watching Welcome to Night Vale. I got past episode fifty, and my god, the I forget what the company's name is called already, but that entire arc was a, was just oh really god, Strex amazing. Corp, God, Strex Corp, more Corp. like Stress Corp, because you're stressing my corpse. More like stress <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be like really funny if everybody thought Lupa was like a witch but she's just a librarian <laughs> oh my God. everyone has like these elaborate funny. theories about like what what Lupa is and what she's doing in the neighborhood she's just a librarian she's just there being doing librarian stuff that'd be like really funny to me I also 
because I can't have OCs exist without shipping them with canning characters, I ship her in Wally. Nice. Nice. There's like a whole Valentine's Day episode where he like brings her flowers and stuff and the main conflict of the episode is that home doesn't like her and like tries to keep Wally away from Lupa. Is there some I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but are there like um some fans that ship Wally with the dog character, the big floofy guy? Yeah, Barnaby V. Beagle. There was like a lot of I'm not entirely sure if they're canon. Um but it is very popular. Uh, Lupa's doing a lot of like hand uh really clinching like, her uh, hand. Barnaby is hilarious. Barnaby is literally my dad. I want to have I want I want, him. I want Barnaby to be my dad. Lupa now was it. kind of meant to to look witchy almost. Now she just looks like a fucking nerd. I love her. Resident Egghead. Because <laughs> we got, like, we the mailman. We've got Frank, who catches butterflies, apparently. We've got Sally Starlet, who is, you know, an actress, a wannabe actress. And then we got Julie. Julie is a delight. I love her. I love Julie. Mm. Best girl. Oh, wait, I can, use, I can use my debit card for coffee? I don't need PayPal? Ellie, what are you doing? Well, that would have been nice to know. Yeah, you can you can pay for things using PayPal, and it'll take the money off your debit card. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't need to go through PayPal. I could just use my debit card, which I just learned after giving you ten dollars. Excuse me. Check your coffee. Trust me. Trust me. Woman, I swear to God. I'm checking my coffee. I just got an email. Why should you ah. put up commissions on my coffee? Oh, yeah. They let you do, like, coffee commissions. Um... Yeah, I think a friend of mine uh, does coffee commissions. I've I've used it to like. Uh, I once to followed this like Undertale AU where Kara sort of took over the ruins uh, in place of Toriel. I don't remember the yeah, exact Paris. plot. I, really, I kind of find it funny how everyone used to blame all of like the bad shit that happens in the game on Kara when. But no, the only reason that she was manifested in the game in the first place was because of the player. So it's like, why? You got, you misgendered Kara. You misgendered them. All of, like, that, this is like that, word that, of God. God damn it. Is word of God canon that all of the kids uh, in Undertale, except for Asriel specifically, are they them pronouns. Like all oh, of the humans. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I, sorry, I'm still trying to unlearn, like, the whole, um, because I remember everyone, we either use she, her, they, the, or not they, them, she, her, he, him pronouns for either Frisk or Kara, and I, I'm still God, trying you to remember unlearn. when people were shipping Frisk and Kara, or is that just my end of the fandom? Where I was. Sorry, they did what? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, people were shipping no. Frisk with Kara. <laughs> What? Well, I mean, it's not like they're siblings. In, like, the traditional still, sense. Still kind of weird, like... Like, if you see like them as kid. siblings, I get it. I'm not gonna begrudge you that. But Carl was, like, long dead before the events of the game started. Yeah, that too. That too. Well, I guess it's better than fucking what I had to deal with, which was Franz. Oh yeah, I also had to deal with Franz. There was also Sans and Papyrus. The Undertale fandom when their what game first came out was, was fucked what? up. There yeah. Was what? Yeah, it was called Font Size. No, no. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. no. It doesn't get any better from here, Chief. 
Uh, I had Metaton and Papyrus. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that was so cute. That was literally my favorite ship. Yeah. I gotta be honest. Wow, got good giggles. Shipping cannon. two canon characters <laughs> together. <laughs> Pardon me? And I also really fucking like how Sans and Metaton would just fuck with each other in that ship. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was very popular fan in where, like, Sans was, like, messing with Metaton all the time. <laughs> God, I, I miss that. I loved that so much. It was literally the best thing ever. Yeah, I think Undertale, um, I think Undertale, for all, for all the bad I saw... I really did like like sh like looking at the fandoms and what it was doing when it was doing something right, but it was like my first exposure to stuff like AUs and whatnot and like oh yeah, and whatnot and stuff. it was so fucking cool to me. I was sucked in during ninth grade. Still kind of am. I still like oh I dude, really the Under of did Undertale? Like, I keep forgetting you're older than me. I think Undertale came out when I was in seventh grade. I also keep forgetting that you are a year younger than me. Oh, yeah. I'm 22. <laughs> I shouldn't be feeling old. Well, well, if you're 22... Wait, when is your birthday? June 6th. Okay, so... Ellie? 6th of June. Ellie? Oh. Ellie? Yes? What? You know who else's birthday is June 6th? No. Damien Thorne from The Omen! <laughs> what? Sorry, I can't- I didn't hear that. One more time. Damien Thorne from The Omen! <laughs> oh! Are you suggesting that I'm the Antichrist? You heard it here, folks. Guy get giggles thinks trans women are the antichrist. I'm canceling myself. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, yeah, that that's just a hilarious coincidence. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is just Lupa post from the Valentine's Day episode where, like, Wally, like, fucking brings her flowers and shit. God, she's so floofy. I want to give her head pats. Literally does the Ghibli fluff where, like, if you startle her, her fur will expand. <laughs> when I finish with Lupa, I think I might... Um, work on my Spider Verse AU. Nice. Um, it this won't contain spoilers for like the Spider Verse movies, but it is set in like it's like Spider World centric. Um, I did talk about it with you before, uh, Ellie, where like. Um, uh, you know, Fenrir and Miles. Yeah. Uh, hang on. I remember you compared it to Miraculous Ladybug, which really made me upset. Yeah, and I thought, <laughs> I thought, I, I thought it made you really fucking upset. Well, I was upset, but not really at you enough to start insulting you out of nowhere. I just really don't like Miraculous anymore. I used to be a very big fan of it. This is when, back when, like, Thomas Ostruck was still on Tumblr. I think he left. Ooh. Thomas Ostruck is the creator of Miraculous Ladybug, and he had a Tumblr blog. Ooh. What happened? I don't know. He just kind of left one day. 
I guess it was because we all got sick of his shit. <laughs> Valid, I suppose. Valid. Because, like, God, back... Back... This was back when, the, in, like, seasons one through three. And... Everyone was starting to get annoyed with the show. Because we kept getting, like... Again? Reveal... Literally, I was not done talking, but we pfft, we sorry, kept sorry. we kept getting like these reveals, these confessions from you know Marinette and Adrian, and then he would do something to basically undo the whole thing and reset it back to zero for literally no reason. I'm. Right. Almighty. Yeah, and we were dealing with this back in like seasons one through three, where like, every, where like we still just had the love square, and we just we were just having fun. The fandom was pr at that point in time wholly unproblematic. We didn't have any shipping wars or anything of the sort because the main series of ships were all just the same people. Because, you know, we had Ladrian, we had, um, I, I don't remember what the Marinette and Adrian ship was, but we had, no, it was Adrianette. We had Ladrian, we had Adrianette, Lady Noir, and Marishat, and that was all we had. And that was it. Okay, I know you're rambling about Miraculous Ladybug, but I just had the biggest culture shock of my life on one of my Discord, on one of the Discord servers I'm on. What happened? Oh no. So apparently Twitter is being rebranded to X. Just X? Yeah, X. Like the letter. Just the letter X? Yeah, hang on. Uh, I'll Jesus Christ, on Elon, Discord. what are you fucking doing? What? He does what Elon does best. Ruins everything for everybody Enigma. else. Yeah. But, yeah, that's so... And apparently, that's not satire. That's real. Hold on. Let me try going to Twitter right now. Crikey. Apparently, X.com officially goes to Twitter. Just X. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why? It's not gonna be. It's like someone getting their arm chopped off and someone like trying to rub cream on the damn thing to get it to regrow back. What's the point? But. <laughs> <laughs> While at least having her meltdown, yeah, Miraculous, in, like, the early days of the fandom, we only had, like, those four ships, and that was all we had. We also had, like, minor ships. Um. <laughs> yeah, she's having a breakdown. Ellie. Yeah. What's up? Do you do you want to talk about the dumb magical girl ripoff show with me instead? Miraculous. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Miraculous is basically... Miraculous is kind of why I sort of got fed up with the will-they-won't-they they plotline. Um, because we kept getting, they will, actually, no, they didn't. And then, they will, no, they didn't. They will, no, they didn't. Over and over and over again. And it's like, just pick one! Is it gonna happen or not? And then, in like, I think halfway through season three, we get introduced to Luca and Kagami. 
Uh, and uh, the love square became the love hexagon. And it was all downhill from I'm, there. I'm freaking sorry. Oh, yeah. So, Luca is... I, re- I can't remember her name. She was the goth girl. Julica! Her name was Julica. Uh, sh- he was Julica's brother. Um, And then Kagami was basically a transfer student who for some reason also had blue hair, like Marinette, which... Oh, let me guess. Blue hair and pronouns. <laughs> yeah, of fucking course she has blue hair and pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right on a bike. But, yeah. And so for some reason... Um, and, like, we liked Luka and Kagami just because they were cool characters. They were new. They were fun. They were funky fresh. And then the incident happened. Adrian There's got with elaborate. Kagami and Marinette got with Luka. I'm... <sighs> All while Marinette still has feelings for Adrian. So then what was the point? I don't know. <laughs> and, okay. So, Luca noticed, um, it, okay. So, Marinette got with Luca, still has feelings for Adrian. Adrian gets with Kagami and then realizes he has feelings for Marinette. I... (sighs) Yeah. It was around, like, halfway through season three. I just got bored of the constant, you know, misdirecting. The only, like, fresh thing we got was, um... I just was the I fucking cat noir Akuma. We got cannon shot blanc because, like, we had the like idea of like if cat noir got akumatized and he just turned into shot blanc. But here's the kicker. So the cool thing was that it was basically a reversed color palette uh, of shot noir. Um, so the suit was white. And the eyes were, like, this menacing purple color. You want to know what they did to the cannon, uh, Chat Blanc? For his eyes? What did they do? They made them what blue! They, they made them the most boring white guy blue! <laughs> Literally thousands upon thousands of fan arts of Chat Blanc with purple eyes... And somehow they fucked it up, and they made them blue, and they made the eyes blue. What's worse is the reason that Shot Blanc got akumatized was that this was an alternate timeline where Marinette and Adrian got together, and then timelines. Yeah, there's timelines. There's timelines. <laughs> Yeah, and the rabbit miraculous apparently allows for time travel. Which, like, I called Why? it. I called Why? it when I'm. So this was back in. So this was back in like season one. I was I was fresh into the show. And, um, okay. So this was before we got the other miraculouses, which were all zodiacs. They were the, you know, the Chinese Zodiac. Right? Cool. That's a cool concept. How did they fuck it up? So No, this was, like, before we got the canonical Zodiac Miraculouses. I had made, like, this OC whose Miraculous was a rabbit. And I kind of based it on the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, which would allow her to time travel for, like, five minutes backwards. She got five minutes backwards, and then she couldn't, 
do it again until she retransformed, and that was the like whole thing with her powers. I don't really remember her name. She's on my Deviant Art page somewhere, probably. But okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, by the way, you yeah. know how? So you remember probably not, but the so the main nerf to Ladybug and Cat Noir's powers is that they could only use their special ability once. And then they had five minutes before their p- Kwamis would detransform them and they'd have to, like, recharge before they could go back and transform again. Right? Uh-huh. Somewhere yeah. in Season 4, they just decided not to detransform! So not only do they they have the stupid will they won't they drag out for far too fucking long, not only do they have time travel, now they're breaking their own damn rules? Apparently. Now, like, the dream logic thing has been done before, and so, like, in the Magnus archives, we have, like, I don't want to spoil too much, but there's a section of the podcast where the rules of the universe start following dream logic for a while. Um, that was cool. Well, at least. Is it set up well, at least? Yeah. So it's set up to be like dream logic, but it also applies to nightmares, and that's how, despite everyone being functionally immortal, um, the things there can still attack and hurt them. Uh-huh. Because these people believe that that is what will happen. Oh, and, like, Canada. that was cool. That was cool as shit. Interesting. Yeah. No. Here, this is just to retcon out their original nerf. So now they no longer have a nerf. And in season... So then why would they introduce a nerf in the first place? I don't know! And it's like... I guess it's meant to, like, show how they've grown. Marinette is still a stalker, though. What? Huh? So, in season one, uh, and season, like, so, like, in the early seasons, um, Marinette, you know how she had this weird fixation with Adrian? She was literally obsessed with the guy. Oh, my fucking god. Yeah, you remember that? I'm. I, I'm. <laughs> Ellie, stay with me. Ellie, stay with me. I can't. <laughs> yeah. She repeatedly stole his phone, broke into his house, um, memorized the man's schedule. <laughs> like, as Ladybug, she broke into Adrian's house. Hot take? When they said they won't with Luka and Kagami um, in, like, season four, question mark, they should have kept it that way. Because Marinette and Luka were fucking cute as shit. Hot take? Stalking is fucking creepy. Yeah. And, like, there's a lot of tropes where, like... The villain is, like, an obsessive stalker yandere. But it also shows up in a lot of popular romance novels with, like, mildly creepy behavior, like, not respecting boundaries. Like, Fifty Shades of Grey is the most aggressive of this. And I've... Because, like, this guy flaunts around his wealth and fucking stalks his supposed love interest... All throughout the trilogy. Sorry, wrong one. That's the one I meant to press. Bull. Oh no, I forgot her tie! Lupa! You're underdressed! I, I mean, she... I think she it would be covered by her, her arms, wouldn't it? Not really, because, like, you see, you've got her chest here, right? Oh, I see. I thought that was her arm. Yeah, no, and this is her... 
This is her tie. She has a tie. It's very important that she keeps her tie. Otherwise, she'd be practically naked. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. Gracious me. Speaking of badly written shows, Star vs. the Forces of Evil. What makes you say that? Okay, so in season one, it was really good. It was fresh. It was new. Because we had, like, this magical princess from an alien dimension. And that was, like, her whole shtick, was that she would fight people with, like, rainbow lasers and narwhal blasts. It was and the you best. Your own spells. No, yeah, it was great. But then they introduced Starko into the actual show. Oh, God, I remember fucking, like, when Marco, um, fucking, what's it called? What did he do? He broke, he, like, broke into, like, the dance the star was at with, uh, I think one of her Oh, yeah, the Blood Moon Ball episode? The Blood Moon Ball episode? Yeah, that's where it all went downhill. It all went downhill from there. Because... <sighs> similar to Star to uh miraculous they kept on with the will they won't they plot star got together with tom got like back together with tom which like to be honest i could see it no yeah tom tom was like actively bettering himself despite like all of his anger issues and he was like yeah, going like through it. yeah he just wanted to be a better person for Star, because, like, that was the main reason they broke up, was his anger issues, and he wanted to, like, be better. He was, like, talking, he was, like, getting help, and he was developing coping mechanisms for his anger. Literally, literally get you a man like Tom. Where, like, he actually tries to earn your love back. Yeah, like, seriously. What the fuck, Marco? No, and like, so the thing is, um, hang on, I need to, I need to double check something. Star versus the foe have. Ah, okay. So, Star versus the forces of evil, right? Start. It has four seasons. Four. Do you know when Star and Marco get together? Which season? When do they get together? The end of the fourth season! I am so sick of, like, the will-they-won't-they they bullshit. Because they won't is never considered for an option. Because they always do. Star and Marco did. Adrian and Marinette did. Fucking... Until they didn't. No. So that's the thing, right? So, if So... They didn't in, like, season four, because Marinette got with Luca, Adrian got with Kagami, and then they did in season five, and then they broke up and got back together repeatedly. Until Gabriel died. Mm -hmm. Literally, Gabriel died, and he's like, Make sure he remembers the times I tried to be a good father. Yeah, you made him pancakes once. I would like to throw hands with whoever wrote that plot line. Thomas Ostrick. He was, like, the fucking main creator, I think. He was, like, the main writer. I would like to throw hands with the main writer. I think it was Thomas... And, like, Thomas has his own problems, too. Because... So, Thomas actually had beef with Ginger Ninja for, like, a minute. 
Why? So, it wasn't even, like, prolonged beef. It was, like, like a literal minute. Like, literally, a single minute. Like, 60 seconds. He was well, boast- was beef, though. So, and this is on Ginger Ninja's YouTube channel. She actually does talk about it. No, sorry. They. They talk about- They actually do talk about it. Um, God, they- yeah. Yeah, they mention, like, oh, yeah, the creator of Miraculous Ladybug blocked me on Twitter. And so the context behind it was that, so, someone had asked, like, did someone who worked on Incredibles 2 also work on Miraculous? Um, because in one of the episodes, the principal gets akumatized and is turned into an owl-based villain. I think is what it was. Or an owl-based... Yeah, it was originally, like, trying to be, like, an owl-based hero, and then... Like, dude, your dogs are barking. Yeah, I know. They do that. They do that. Um, and someone asked, like, did someone, um... Who worked on Incredibles 2 also work on Miraculous for, like... I think it was the design team? And then Thomas is out here like, um, our artists are actually way better than the idiots working on Incredibles 2. And Jinja Ninja was like, I don't think you should. I am not joking. And Jinja Ninja's response was, I don't think we should be putting down our fellow artists. We should be uplifting one another. And then Thomas fucking blocked them. Oh my god. Thomas! What the hell, man? Jesus Christ, Tom! Jinja Ninja is so wholly unproblematic. And yet, you blocked them. Uh... And this was like a long time ago. But, yeah, hilariously though, after... I haven't heard jack shit about Miraculous Ladybug even after it ended, and I think everyone just kind of forgot about it. The only reason I know what happened here was in a recap video someone made so that nobody else had to watch the rest of the show. Oh my God. I, keep, I almost think you're forgetting that unless like someone constantly brings up Miraculous, I always forget it exists. Same, I kind of forgot about... Like, Steven Universe also faded into obscurity after it ended, because nobody cared about it anymore. Because yeah. it was that annoying. With the fucking mystery mongering and shit. In the worst fucking way. It, it was preachy, yes. But it was preaching bad morals. Because it was preaching yeah, about, like, forgiveness. That's what I meant so, I said in the worst fucking way. Here's the thing, though. So, its main message, supposedly, according to Rebecca Sugar, was forgiveness, right? Do you know who gets the redemption arc? Forgive, forgive genocide? You don't! You don't! You literally can't! Especially when the main character is a cishet white guy whose mother figure is POC-coded. <laughs> and like as the show goes on Garnet becomes less and less of a character which is bad enough but then when it's revealed that Blue Diamond tried to fucking shatter her for existing Steven still has the fucking gall to insist that the diamonds are family. <laughs> family! They didn't do shit for you! They didn't do jack worth fuck for you! I'm going <laughs> Somebody needs to make a compl compilation of Ellie going fucking feral. Oops. 
Yes. What is humanity? What are these show writers? Oh, yeah, Rebecca Sugar isn't even a writer. <sighs> they, like... They were, like, primarily an artist who became an executive producer and then thought that they could write. But they can't. And they, they're not even very good at art. Because, like, the only good thing people really had to say about Steven Universe's animation were the backgrounds. Because, like, the backgrounds were kind of freaking pretty. The music they wasn't were. even that good either. I will admit, they really were. And, I'm on, and I honestly once tried to replicate the backgrounds and failed miserably because I suck at backgrounds. I mean, we all suck at backgrounds. What happened? <sighs> but everyone, nobody had anything good to say about the writing. Nobody had anything good to say about the writing. And when confronted with, like, why the show sucked and why people didn't like it, somebody once asked, like, people asked, did you at least like the songs? And it's, no! The songs were bad, too! The movie was carried by the Broadway actors and actresses who were singing Rebecca's terrible songwriting. Uh... The fact that I tried to like this show just... <laughs> I tried to. I tried to. And like... I wanted the, to like it so bad. The but... only compliment I will ever give Steven Universe is that it led me to my friend Alma, who proceeded to lead me to South Park, which proceeded to lead me to Hell Park, which led me to you. And the rest of the people in the Krusty Crew server. Shout out to the Krusty Crew! Aw, thank you. That is the only good thing to ever come out of Steven Universe. And I will stand by that. <laughs> yeah. That warms my heart. That warms my cold, jaded heart. <sighs> But yeah, so back to Lupa. <laughs> Maybe we need a compilation of you trashing on Steven Universe. We need to make a compilation of me just shit talking other shows. I am recycling a lot of points made by Miss Lily Orchard. Uh, you sh you guys should go view her content. She makes good shit. She makes good shit yeah, and. You know. I need to watch more of her shit. Oh yeah, she makes great shit. Especially her wife. Her wife makes good shit too. Yeah. Her wife actually did a first impressions of Lego Monkey Kid, by the way. Was it good? Please tell me it was good. I really like Lego Monkey Kid. She loves Lego Monkey Kid! Especially Red Sun. Red Sun oh. is just so fun. The feral fucker. I love you, Red Sun. You know what? Let's talk about good written shows. Lego Monkey Kid is really good. Like, you don't expect... Writing, animation, characters, good lord. Like, yeah, you wouldn't expect a show with as many references to anime as it has in Lego Monkey Kid to actually be good. But the writers here actually know what they're fucking doing. Flying Bark Studios has also done Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, and it's also done uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the latest version, the la latest show for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Rise. Rise is so good. Like, holy shit. It is. It's really good. Especially with Mikey. I love Mikey. He Michelangelo was actually always point. my favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Like this is this is back like in the 2012 version. Mikey was still my favorite. And this is there is one gripe I have, and it's not any fault of the show itself. It's HBO, like not HBO. It's Paramount putting all the fucking um, episodes out of order in uh, in Paramount Plus. They're all in order on Netflix, you know. Wait, what? Yeah. It's also on Netflix. Yeah. I mean, last I checked. 
Why did I even bother getting a Paramount Plus account? This is why we need to, like... We need to, like... Stop making new streaming services. There are already way too many. Yeah, seriously. Disney right. literally owns Hulu. They didn't need to make their own streaming subscription. Exactly. Anyway. Oh, yeah, did you yeah, hear Black Butler is getting a new season? Show. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you, you go first. Black Butler is getting a new season. Nice. And I remember when I was, like, starting to binge the show, because I was, um, um, for context, a friend of mine had commissioned me to, like, draw a Rise version of my persona. And yeah. And when I was binging the show for research, which, honestly, was really good, I saw how they, I saw, okay, I don't know, that's talking about the commission, that's not talking about the gripes they have, I'll talk about the commission thing later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was watching the show, and, um, there was a, I forget what the name of the of the the, the 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 of the mutant villain was, but he was like a pig butcher. And in the in the context of the episode, apparently the the turtles had already um, encountered this guy before. Because, but um, when I was watching, I never saw this guy. And then I got to his episode, and I was like, why wasn't this before the other episode? Uh, because Paramount Pictures it, hates you it actually specifically. Everything about like the what. Because Paramount what? Plus hates you. That's why. Yeah, but I guess it does. But yeah, it's like, it explained his backstory and everything. The fact that he was like a TV chef person. He was basically a parody of I Gordon Ramsay. And I loved that. Yeah, literally. And it's just like, I just... You know what so he kind of reminded me of? Thing. Yeah. The butcher from Word Girl. Oh yeah, the the guy who can literally make meat out of thin air. I gotta watch Word Girl again. Oh yeah, he never. By the way, he didn't make meat out of thin air. Apparently, according to the wiki, uh, he summons it from the meat dimension. What? Yeah. <laughs> That is ridiculous. I adore that. Literally, <laughs> if you want a good show, apparently you have to go to, like, children's media. Word Girl is so beautifully written in that, yes, it's an educational show. It's a, it's a PBS show. All their shows are educational. But Word Girl has, like so many golden moments and people keep making like compilations of moments out of the show. Yeah, God, I think you showed me a few of those compilations and I just, I, I was choking on my own laughter. My <laughs> favorite really villain good. in all of Word Girl is Toby McAllister III. I love him. He's so silly. Yeah. But you know, he's not creepy. He's just you know he's he's a kid with a crush, and it really shows. He like doesn't quite understand it yet, but like yeah. it's so cute. Just watching him flounder he's... over himself. God, I think you made no see to ship with him, didn't you? Yeah, I did, but like, I remember you made a TikTok. Where, like, the character was like, I, I don't remember what it was like, but it was like, Pretty Boy, come here. And he was like, oh, I'm Pretty Boy. <laughs> and she's like, yes! I, I love <laughs> Panic so much. She was originally supposed to be a sort of Venom-ish character to mimic, you know, Word Girl herself. And now she's just a fairy. I, I don't know why I decided she was a fairy, but now she's a fairy and it's great. <laughs> yeah. Panic is so fun to write for. I like making OCs to ship with canon characters, if only to, like, explore how to write things. Yeah, that's valid. And also because I was really mad at Becky for how she talked to Toby in the Miss Power special. 
Because like, how could you do that to I him? Mean... Listen, okay. Toby didn't even do anything to her, really. It's not like any of them realize she has her own personal life. Oh my god. Sorry, you go. I was I was trying to say she was being manipulated, but like Oh yeah, know. she was definitely being manipulated, but also the rage there was it had to be real, otherwise Miss Power wouldn't have had any legs to stand on. So, like, she was mad at Toby for not realizing that she had her own personal life when she actively keeps that personal life a secret. But, like, I do kind of understand mm -hmm. it, but also, like, Toby deserves a villainous companion. He deserves... He deserves a villainous companion. Deserves not even to date. Level. Exactly. He deserves someone on his level. And if that person just so happens to be a fairy, so fucking be it. Like, justice for my boy Toby. Man literally walked into jail in the Miss Power special. <laughs> I will admit, that, is actually, that was actually kind of funny. Yeah, they all just walked into jail. They were just so hurt by what <laughs> Word Girl had said to them that they just walked into prison. He was like, you know what? Fuck this, actually. <laughs> yeah, he was like, you know what? Fuck this, actually. <laughs> also, why did Word Girl have to go for him about his mom like that? I don't know, man. I'm not, I didn't write the show. Like, why'd that have to happen? Because the writers are feeling particularly cruel. I think I'm gonna fix her body shade. I don't like how it looks. Where is it? But, yeah, so just... Justice for Toby McAllister, honestly. Yeah, valid. So what do you think of Lupa? I still, I still think he's a dork. And I mean that in, in like, the most... Affectionate uh, way possible. Like, also, look at Toby McAllister, and you tell me he wouldn't grow up to be the most dramatically evil Dr. Doofenshmirtz ever. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and now I just imagine Doofenshmirtz going, A girl? Where a girl? <laughs> <laughs> Becky just fucking shows up, and he's like, A girl? <laughs> and she slaps a star onto her chest, and he's like, What? Girl, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> also, I love Toby's mom. Unironically, she doesn't even do much. She like it's implied that she's a single mom because we never meet Toby's dad in the show. Yeah, I, I the, the the way we said that kind of had the same energy as you remember the episode where Perry and Candace switched bodies. It had the same energy as like Perry's introduction in that episode. A teenage girl, Perry, the teenage girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> But seriously, I love Toby McAllister, and you can quote me on that. Toby McAllister is the best yes. character ever. Yes. And Dr. Two Brains is the best voice actor. Don't oh yeah, Dr. Two, Dr. Two Brains is actually voiced by the Ice King? Yes, I know. He's voiced by the thing I did Spongebob. I was j Oh my god, I am so glad you mentioned that. I was literally about to check to see if his voice actor also voiced Sun Wukong. I said Spongebob, not Sun Wukong, but yeah. No, yeah, I know. I was I was just about to ask. But, like, I know Sun Wukong is not voiced by Spongebob. There's no way Spongebob's voice actor could be Sun Wukong. Because Sun Wukong God. is an enjoyable douchebag. 
Could you imagine, though? Could you fucking imagine? I'm ready! I'm ready! <laughs> As he's, like, charging to fight a demon. <laughs> Okay, thoughts on the colors. Pretty, very pretty. I'm very hungry. You should have eaten before you showed up. I had cinnamon toast. Then why are you hungry? Because I didn't have a proper, like, breakfast. It was just uh. cinnamon toast all day today. Uh... Eloise Johnson! Okay, in my defense, I was going to make an egg sandwich with that toast, but the pan that I used to make it was in the dishwasher, and everything else was reserved for the rest of the family. <laughs> or or I just didn't feel like eating it, because I really didn't want to have cheese puffs for breakfast. I would have sucked it up and ate the cheese puffs. Listen... <laughs> Junk food is better than I'm no very food. Self conscious. Also, props to uh, Johnny Young Bosch for his work as Ninja. You gotta, you gotta respect Johnny. Yeah, you do. The guy did such a good job. Also, he apparently he. So fast. Keep it PG. <laughs> I, this isn't gonna be PG. You paid. You tried to pay me to do this. Ellie, if you say something okay, NSFW, you're gonna you're get not me not banned from Twitch. Yeah, ge though, genuinely, though, if you are not comfortable with me talking about this, I won't talk about it. I'm sorry. It's for my safety. It's what? It's for my safety. Fair, fair. Yeah, fair. Okay, yeah. Th never mind. Yeah. Cancel the blast. Cancel the blast. I'm putting the blast on hold. Though I do know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> and I don't regret it. You did great. Yeah. <laughs> I did not. I didn't. Literally, yes, you did. Literally, no, I did not. I could have done so much better. You sounded exactly like oh him. God. No, I didn't! That was just my voice! Yeah. <laughs> Raise your standards, please! Uh, I can't, because then I'd be incorrect. Because you literally... Just from your voice alone, you sounded more like Ninja than I ever could. Oh and you know what? Hot take. Hot take again. They need to make Ninja what? do something in the show. Like, I love it when he's there. He's a fucking riot. But also, they never let him do anything. Like, the I minute he shows up, they fucking... I think, that's just, I think that's just a general normal take. Lukewarm take! <laughs> yeah. You don't introduce Chekhov's gun when they're not do anything with it. Don't introduce Chekhov's gun if you're not going to fire. <laughs> exactly. She's kind of looking like Twilight Sparkle. I'm, but that's fine. You know, all this talk about good and bad writers kind of makes me a little nervous. Because, um... In, God... In the server I'm in, I'm working on a, a server AU because there's like an entire thing in that server where you can make like alternate universes with like the people in the server, and I think it's really cool. Yeah. But I'm working on a fangin specifically like 
for an AU, and I just, I'm really fucking scared of, like, fucking it up, you know? Like, yeah, I get that. Band, like, it's not supposed to be perfect, but it's like, I just don't, I don't, I don't want to be... <laughs> I mean, Ellie, you've played the Donkin Rampa games. I don't think you could get any worse than that. Well, okay, well, first of all, you're not running Nazis in space, so jot that down. I'm not what? I said, well, first of all, you're not writing Nazis in space, so jot that down. Fair. Still, I could bot something else. And botching is okay. I'm, I've botched so much stuff. I I know, but I don't want to. Well, you can't avoid it. Uh, God. You just gotta accept that you might botch something, but the fact that you tried not to is still good. And if you admit when it's botched, even better. Because, like, Rebecca Sugar, Rebecca Sugar refuses to admit that they botched any of their writing. Oh, when you, you said when you admit. I thought you said when you do botch something even better. <laughs> well, yeah, if you do botch something, that just proves you're not an AI. <laughs> Fair. 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 I'm going to have to make her leg warmers black. There is just no more room for color in here. I should draw my persona with the leg warmers that you draw on her. They're just leg warmers. I know, but like when you when you draw draw my persona, you always give my persona like the the blue leg warmers. Those aren't leg warmers. Those are tights. Oh, well, you get the idea. I, I need to draw those. Like, just make them a part of her design when I draw her. Were they not already a part of her design? I gave her, like, a denim skirt with, like, blue leg warm- with, like, de darker blue leg warmers. Were they not already yeah, part of the design? The design? Yeah. No, that was purely, like, you. That was- that was something that you did. And My I, doll and effect! I, <laughs> I thought she had blue yeah. legs. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I think that it might have been- you did? And now I want to do it, because it looks really good. I think I might have done it because I have to wear, like, shorts and tights to, like... safely wear skirts because my yeah. legs are so thick. Thick thighs save lives. Just saying. What? Nothing. Why'd you go? Ah! I made a noise. Anyway, I'm exporting this. You just felt like, like making a noise. Yeah, exactly. I just felt like making a noise. All right. Well, there. loop is done. There. And then we are going to finish up my doodles for my Spider-Verse AU. Yeah! And in 20 minutes, I'm going to go live. Pog. But yeah, so this is what we've got so far. So in... so stupid for like... Okay, so... I, you explain this, this real fast, and I'll, and I'll explain uh, why I'm mad at myself. No, you go first. Oh, because then I'd be stealing your thunder. Ellie. Fucking uh, say fine. it! I'm mad that I forgot that this was Miles, okay? I mean, it doesn't really look like my the Miles that we know, especially with the hair that I gave him. I just wanted to, like, make him stand out from, like, the other two Miles Moraleses that we've got. Wait, there's two? Yeah, there's two. The second one shows up in the second else. Do movie. Do not say else, please. Do not, do, not, do not say anything else, please. I still need to watch the movie. <laughs> the sequel movie, yes. Yes, I still need to watch it. 
because god damn it, I, 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 where can I watch it? Please tell me where I can watch it so I can just get it over with, because I really want to watch it. I loved the first movie. I'm trying to find where I can watch one for me. I'm doing my best. Uh, uh, but anyway, so in this say you, Miles is the prowler, but is also a vigilante. Fenrir is Loki's daughter, and is basically that world Spider-Man. Uh, interesting. How much you want to bet the canon event is Miles getting killed? Uh, it is not. See, that's like the only spoiler that I am aware of when it comes to like this, uh, uh, across the... Is it, is it under the Spider-Verse or across the Spider-Verse? Across the Spider-Verse. Um, the canon event is not Miles getting killed. You, uh, you cut off. The canon event in Fenrir's universe is not Miles being killed. Before that. That's literally what I said. That's what. That's I'll all. What I said. I'll just Google it. You'll just Google what? It's across the Spider Verse. It's across the Spider Verse. Okay. Oh. Uh, oh, that's what you meant. Yeah, like you should have specified that. Because you you were trying to tell me you were trying. You said that before you said the. God damn it! That's why I said before that. But yeah, so yeah, no, the canon event is not Miles being killed in Fenrir's universe. I would never do that to Fenrir, That's... except on Chat AI. <laughs> Shut up! Shut the fuck up! I was playing with an AI bot who was like the Miles that we see in the movie, and I like directly stated that in Fenrir's world, Miles is dead. But it was like Good just Lord. for that thread with the bot. <laughs> just for like primo angst. Cause like these guys are teenagers, let, man. Let it be known here, folks. Whenever she's not role playing with me, she's role playing with a bot. Exactly. I'm role playing with a bot. She, she... I still don't understand why why why. Oh god, hold on. Let me collect myself. God. Why do you think my writing is good? Because I do. I don't need to explain my opinions to you. It's not that good, though. Then why would I write with you? Why would I write with you? If it's not good. No, no, no. That's why I'm asking. You need to go to therapy, man. Like, okay, first of all, shut up. I'm working on. I'm working on getting a better job to do so. Anyway. Secondly, secondly, I asked because I want to try and like. Cause I'm trying to improve my writing for the AU that I'm working on. Well, I like your writing just fine. So shut. I uh, just wanted... Screw it. Uh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. But yeah, so no, the canon event is not Miles uh, getting killed. Fenrir's canon event is the Infinity War. I'm friggin' sorry? Yeah, you remember Marvel Infinity War? I remember it exists. Yeah, that's her canon event. But in this universe, uh. Thor and... The, so Thor and Loki don't die at the beginning of the movie. Like, Loki... Um, sorry, I don't want to spoil you. Oh yeah, Fenrir is like... What was she? What were they? Were Loki's they daughter. Loki's daughter. Yes, she was Loki's yeah, daughter. Okay. 
because in Greek mythology, Fenrir is the child of Loki and Anger Boda. Gotcha, gotcha. Specifically, her canon event was the second Infinity War. There's a second one? No. There's one here, there isn't one in literally anywhere else. I was about to say. So, Fenrir grows up after, like, the end of the first Infinity War. Uh, Loki's in jail. Thor is raising her, and she's being trained by that universe's Peter Parker. So that's how she basically becomes Spider-Wolf. Because, like, she already had magic. She didn't need a radioactive spider bite. Gotcha. But then the second Infinity War happens... And then, and I, I remember I mentioned that Dr. Oliver Octavius uh, created the, uh, I think it was the Octo Watches, that basically turns people into cybernetic zombies, and now they're living in a fucking technological apocalypse. Ah, so the metal virus, but not. Yeah, no, the metal virus is. The metal virus is a virus. It's not like a zombie apocalypse. Well, okay. It's anyway, a different, it's a different like situation than yeah. The, than the octowatches one, are not a so virus. Say. They're just the there. Only reason, <laughs> the only reason I compare it to the metal virus is because both of them involve some sort of roboticized like thing. One's a virus. The other's something completely different. Sorry. Yeah, the other is like a physical watch that just embeds into someone's body and turns them into a cybernetic zombie. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, Fenrir is that universe's Spider-Man. Miles loses his dad and has to live with his uncle Aaron and sort of takes over as the Prowler, but instead of being a criminal, he just becomes a vigilante. He and Fenrir kind of had this rivalry going on between, like, the Prowler and Spider-Wolf. Hmm. It's fun. It's a fun time. It slaps the roof of the Fenriverse. You can fit so much dark romance in this bad boy. Mm -hmm. In their civilian forms, Miles and Fenrir are very close. They're practically besties. Literally, she calls him her battle brother. Oh, I, I think he actually gave like a shit, uh, sends me a shit post involving these two, where it's like she explains to, to Spider Miles that they're like battle brothers, I think. And well, then, and the mom's technically like, so the, like, cor the correct term would be battle siblings, because Fenrir identifies as female. You get the idea, though. You get the idea. Yeah. Was, yeah, that's basically like, what so this he, is. And, and Spider-Man was like, oh, so he's your boyfriend? She was like, I fucking wish! Oh, yeah, no, that wasn't Miles. That was Gwen. So it, so she explains that her Miles is her battle brother, and Spider-Miles is like, oh, so he's your best friend? And she's like, no, we're much closer than that. And Gwen is like, so he's your boyfriend, and Fenrir is like a fucking wish. Oh, it was Gwen who said who suggested they were boyfriends, uh, or he was his, her. Stop misgendering Fenrir. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, in their civilian forms, these two are freshman art students. Fenrir does performing arts. Miles does prop making. Because I like, I wanted to keep that that Miles in the first movie was like an artist. I wanted to keep that. So these two are like college aged, and they are artists. That's very cool. After the second Infinity War and Peter Parker and Thor both die, Fenrir is sort of left alone, and then Oliver takes over with the Octowatch, which is basically just evil technology. 
and anyone who wears it can then be turned into a cybernetic zombie to be puppeted by Dr. Oliver. Hmm, interesting. And in, like, a short period of time, Spider-Wolf and the Prowler both get hunted down, and it's, like, it's a whole big dramatic thing where they're, like, hiding out together, and they just reveal their identities to each other. Someone needs to get these kids some therapy, man. Every Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse deserves some kind of fucking therapy. There's actually a clip from Across the Spider-Verse. One of the Spider-Mans is a therapist. (laughs) 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 It's the funniest moment in the whole movie, from what I've seen of it. Also... I love Hobie Brown. I love the reason it took them so long to come out with this sequel was because of Hobie. Of who? Hobie Brown. He was basically spider punk. They had to figure out how to animate him. And that's why it took them so long. I mean, from the clips I've seen, they did a fantastic job. Oh, absolutely they did. But you're not going to notice this with like your naked eye. But every part of how Hobie is animated is on, like, a different time frame. Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, I think Hobie himself is on, like, a three by three. So he's animated on threes. His outline is animated on twos. And then there was something else. I think it's, like... Something of his was animated on once, but he was like, so like every part of him is animated on a different time frame. He's like, I don't believe in consistency, and then proceeds to not be animated consistently across the body. That's fucking amazing. That is I, fucking amazing. Yeah, I know. Um, for context about Fenrir's suit, um, it's actually magic. She's using sorcery to basically. Morph a suit around her. And, and if it's... Of course, this suit makes her afraid. No, I'm sorry. No, that, that's so, that was so stupid. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Fenrir just likes wolves. Ain't nothing wrong with liking wolves. Valid. I just say that my joke was fucking stupid. It was. <laughs> Glad we're on the same page, anyway. But yeah, so Fenrir... The reason, like, in-universe is that she just likes wolves, but Fenrir in Norse mythology is just a giant wolf. She's so fluffy. Exactly, she's very fluffy. God, I love the way... (laughs) Sorry to go on a little bit of a tangent, but I absolutely adore the way that you draw, like, furry characters... Well, thank you. I do a lot of furry art. If you want to commission me, hit me up with a DM. Or, like, message me on coffee or something. Shameless tag. You should put that on your coffee. Put, like, set up a commission store on your coffee. I could. If I wanted to. But, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so Fenrir and her Miles have like this romantic little dance going on. They are the superior version of the love square where there's no will they won't they bullshit. There's just which one is going to get together first. I don't know. Well, of course you don't know. Not even I know. It's totally those two. <laughs> yes. But yeah. Also, Fenrir 
So I know you, I've shown you Art of Fenrir before, where, like, she's swinging around on golden chains. Mm -hmm. Those are the chains that held her to Yggdrasil. Chains that do what now? They were the chains that were used to bind her to the world tree. She was bound to the world tree? Oh, yeah. So in Norse mythology, Fenrir was chained up to the world tree because he was growing too strong for Odin's liking. Of uh, fucking course. And actually... Uh, have in have potential. Perish. <laughs> Let me finish, Ellie. It was because uh, Fenrir was destined to kill Odin during Ragnarok. Is why they chained him up. Oh. Oh. He was going to get that powerful. And they were like, that's probably not going to be a good idea to keep around. So they disguised it as playing a game with Fenrir where they would chain him to the tree with stronger and stronger things. But then when they actually got the magical chain made of impossible things that was going to chain him up, he got suspicious and he was like, one of you is going to have to stick your hand in my mouth. And if I can't break free, I'm going to bite your hand off. And Tyr sacrificed oh, his yeah. hand. I think you showed me like a miscellaneous myths episode about that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to color these off screen because this is not stream exclusive artwork, but we're going to stop here. Ellie, thank you for joining me. Of course. And all of you have a wonderful week. Yeah. Bye.